Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hello, everyone. My name is Luis. Welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. I hope everybody's safe, healthy, and hopefully on their way to wealth. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. Today, I'd like to speak to you about the consequences of taking money out of a 401k to pay for credit cards and other consumer debt. I often get this question a lot by clients. And yeah, it's something that I feel like a lot of people do. So I wanted to address it because I'd like for you to make an informed decision before you pull the trigger on that distribution. So let's talk about some of the consequences. When you take money out of a 401k, if you save money in the traditional aspect of it, where basically you put money in there pre-tax, then all that money will eventually come out of that 401k as a taxable distribution, which means that you have to pay ordinary income tax at whatever your tax bracket is that year. In addition to that, if you are under the age of 59 and a half, typically some people um, age 55, when they leave their jobs, they could take money out of a 401k without paying the additional 10% penalty. But in general, if you take money out of the 401k before you're age 59 and a half, you have to pay a 10% penalty in addition to income taxes. So that could be a lot of money that you're missing out on by just making the distribution between your federal tax bracket, your 10% penalty. And also if you live in a state that has state income tax, you might also have to pay state income tax on that. So that could be a very hefty penalty. So let's talk about the long-term and the short-term consequences of taking money out. So let's talk about one example. Let's say that you have $20,000 in an old 401k. Uh, maybe you switch jobs or maybe you lost your job once. The 401k stayed with the prior employer's administrator. You have a new job now and you want to wonder if you should take that money out to pay for debt that you might have accumulated throughout the times. Now, before I get into the numbers, I want to just point out typically the ordinary income tax and the 10% penalty apply for distribution to be 459 and a half. Under COVID, there are some additional exceptions that have been added. So if you are taking money out and it's a qualified COVID related distribution, which I have another episode on that you can check out. Basically, there are some exceptions for the 10% penalty, and there are some allowances that would let you pay that money back within a three year period or spread the taxes that you owe on that money within a three year period. But for this purpose, I just want to assume that it is not a coronavirus related distribution or another exception. Uh, 401ks have exceptions sometimes taking money out, whether it's death or disability, for example, would waive that 10% penalty. IRAs have even more flexibility. If you take money out for higher education expenses, you can waive the 10% penalty. Or if you take money out for a first time home buyer up to 10,000, they waive the 10% penalty up to that 10,000. But for the purposes of this podcast, I just want to talk about um, if no exceptions apply and it's not a coronavirus related distribution, just a simple you move jobs and now you have this money in this old 401k and you're considering just taking that money out to pay off some debt. So let's get right into it. Let's say you have $20,000 in a 401k right now. And you're saying, you know what? I have some debt that I've accumulated throughout the years. Uh, I'm paying 22% on this credit card while I have this money sitting there. Why not just take that money out and then pay off my debt? And at first it sounds like a something that is appealing, right? You have this lump sum of money that you have sitting there. You, you've accumulated throughout the years and now you have all this debt. Your debt is probably at a higher interest rate than the interest rate that you are earning on the account, very likely, depending on how you're invested. So it sounds like a logical approach to say, let me just take this lump sum out and wipe out my debt and start clean. All right, so let's take a look at it little by little. Let's say you do in fact have $20,000 as one example, and you decide to take this money out. Let's put you in the 22% tax bracket. So now you have to pay 22% ordinary income tax on that 20,000. If you're under the age of 59 and a half and you don't qualify for any exceptions, you have the additional 10% penalty by the IRS on that 20,000. So we're up to 32% so far. 
And then let's say you live in a state that has state income tax, and let's be conservative and say your state income tax is 5%. So now you're up to a combined 37% hit on that distribution, 22% federal, 10% IRS penalty, 5% state income tax distribution. So that means that on $20,000, your net after tax is really only $12,600 because you paid a total of $7,400 in taxes and penalties. Now, when you think about it, that 37%, it's probably higher than the interest rate you're paying on that credit card. Now, I know that you pay the credit card for long and this is a one-time distribution, but you have to consider the fact that you are losing quite a bit of money when you first take that distribution out. So think about it this way, from 20,000, you're left with $12,600. Now, there are several different ways that you can address this. When you make the distribution, you do have the option of withholding taxes. Some 401k administrators might automatically withhold a 20% standard rate. You could increase that if you want to as a precaution, just so that you're not ending up owing a ton of money at tax time. So that could be a good strategy to do that so that you don't owe a whole bunch of money. Uh, if you somehow get away with not being able to withhold any and you get the full 20, just know that you are going to have to include that in your taxable income at tax time because you will get a form 1099-R from the 401k administrator. So combine that with your employment income and other income that you might have had, you could even potentially go into a higher tax bracket. So that's something that you have to look at very carefully. Now, these are the immediate consequences that you will see because it's gonna be taxed either when you take the money out uh, via the withholding, um, and then possibly even more when you file taxes because sometimes the withholding is not enough to cover the amount that was due on that money, right? So these are the immediate consequences. Now, one thing that I, some people don't even realize is the long-term consequences that this can have on your overall future and the money that you are accumulating. So let's use the very same example of that $20,000. Let's look at it long-term. For those of you that are not familiar with the concept of time value of money, um, it basically says that a dollar today is worth more than the same dollar tomorrow. Uh, the reason for that is because one, prices continue to go up, right? Inflation keeps eating away at the purchasing power of that dollar. So you might be able to buy a certain amount of goods or services with the dollar today, in 10 years, that same dollar is likely to buy less because things just keep going up. As you've noticed, the prices of groceries keep going up, prices of gas, et cetera. So slowly but surely, your dollar keeps losing money in its purchasing power. Even though you still have the, the actual dollar, it's just worth less because it, the amount of things that it can buy decreases over time. The second thing is, in theory, you can take that dollar and invest it in something, and then it'll be worth more in the future, right? So let's use this very example. If you took $20,000 today and you invested it, let's say you left it in the 401k or rolled it over into an IRA and invested it. Let's use an example of somebody who is 30 years old and is going to retire at age 60. So assuming that they invest that money, they leave it invested for that 30 year period. And the example I'm gonna give you is even without adding anything to it, $20,000 invested averaging 7% return over a 30 year period. And I'm using these numbers just to give you an example. That money will be worth $152,245 in 30 years. So in, in, even imagine if you were adding $100, $200, $300 a month to that, plus like, um, let's say if you rolled it over into your employer, a new employer's 401k, and then you were getting matching contributions from your own contributions that you were making, et cetera, it could be a lot of money. So $20,000 taken out today gives you, in my example, a, an immediate loss of $7,400 because you have to pay federal taxes, state taxes, and the 10% penalty, but you also lose the ability of that $20,000 to remain invested for that long term and compound over time and grow. So in this case, 20,000 would have grown to 152,245 at 7%. So that is a massive hit that you are taking, not even realizing it. So before you decide to take money out from a 401k, you want to look at your tax bracket that year 
you want to see if there are any exceptions that you qualify for on that 10% penalty. You want to make sure you understand what your state income tax rate is, if any. And this is where the value of a financial planner comes in because a simple move like that will cost you a ton of money over time. So you want to make sure that you discuss this with somebody that has your best interest at heart and also knows the tax laws and the compounding interest, time value of money, and can apply that to your situation. So before you make any move, be sure to speak to your financial advisor. Um, you know, a lot of the times people that don't have an advisor might have an accountant, but when they take this money out, they're not consulting with their accountant. So by the time they go do their taxes, it's too late because they already got the tax form and they already took the money out and it's too late to put it back and undo the decision. So something to consider. So for the most part in general, it probably will not be a good idea for you to take this money out of a 401k to pay off debt in general. Obviously, everybody's situation is different, which is why you definitely should consult with a financial advisor. So I hope that helps clear up something in case you are in that situation and you were considering taking money out of a 401k to pay off some debt. Um, I would urge you also to look at tools like powerpay.org, which I'm going to put in the resource area of the show notes, because you can develop your own plan to pay off debt in a short amount of time, depending on how much money you have extra to add to your overall debt repayment plan. You can also consider the options of debt consolidation and compare them to what it would look like if you paid debt on your own. You know, I've spoken other podcast episodes about different methods that you can use to pay off your debt. One is called the avalanche method. One is called the snowball method. And these might be better options for you to do. Um, I know it's not the instant gratification that one would get from just taking money out of a 401k and, and paying this debt off. So it's going to be a slower progress. But overall, you're probably going to be doing yourself a favor just because of the amount of taxes that you would save and the amount of money that you would save over the long term by keeping that money invested. So I hope this clears some things up and uh, you're now empowered to make a, a more informed decision. But as always, consult this with your tax account or your financial advisor. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. So if you have any questions, send me an email at luis at onmywaytowealth.com. Also, if you have any episode ideas or anybody that you would like for me to interview, feel free to reach out. I'm always open to ideas. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at louise at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.